No matter how slick and deceptive and cunning you are, there's someone just a little slicker and just a little more conniving than you are. Jacob was about to meet his match. The textual backdrop takes place at his uncle Laban's house. It is there that Jacob meets and falls in love with Rachel, his uncle's youngest daughter. According to the tradition of his day, a seven year work epic is required. He completes the requirements of working for seven years and on his wedding night, help me Jesus, Miss Jacob is veiled and presented to Jacob. He consummates the marriage only to discover on the wedding morning that he has been tricked and deceived. The trickster is finally being tricked. His uncle Laban had concocted an elaborate scheme to marry off his first daughter, the not so attractive Leah. So instead of Jacob spending the night with the girl of his dreams, he had unfortunately slept with the one he did not want. Humiliated at the manipulation of his uncle, Jacob to no avail protested. Isn't it strange when people do us like we did them? We got a whole lot to say. Some of us do well until the tables are turned. He causes a ruckus, but nothing is changed. His uncle says, if you really love Rachel, then another seven years is required. <laughs> Jacob now must work an additional seven years to have a Rachel in his arms. After 14 years of servitude, he finally marries Rachel, only to have to face another problem how many know that what you do finally catches up with you and it will show up in ways that you least expect after seven years of working hard for Miss Rachel he discovers that Rachel is barren she is unable to conceive for whatever reasons, Rachel's womb is closed. Let's look at the text. Leah, although unattractive to Jacob, is the fruitful wife. Rachel's disappointment with her inability to have children sets the stage for her rivalry with Leah. Now, female rivalry added to a woman's already competitive nature can be revealed in no better way than their fighting for the attention and the affection from the same man. You talking about a war zone. You get two women 
trying to have the same man. Oh, somebody here know what I'm talking about. Love them. You talking about female rivalry and what we will do to make him love us instead of her. Why? Even the most docile of women will come out with fangs and claws when you start messing with their man. I know I got some women in here like that. Don't mess with my, mess with my money, mess with my cooking, talk about the way I look, but don't mess with my man. We will compete with women in all kinds of ways. Our physical attractiveness. We will buy a cosmetic counter out. We will cream it, oil it, false, false place it. We will copy a magazine spread. And by every shade that they say that the model has on, just to look good. We'll do it with our bodies. Workouts. Spas. Exercise programs. Diet pills. Dexatrim and the like. Weight Watcher dinners. Jenny Craig food. Cabbage patch, slim fast, grapefruit, low carbohydrate, high fiber, anything. To make us look the best. Fat women. Throw off on skinny women. Skinny women. Make fun of fat women. Hippie busty women. Talk about flat-chested, skinny women. Anything to compete one with another. But we need to make up our minds, sister, that he ain't that important. If it means contention between me and you, he just ain't all that. Cause if God made one, mess that men put us through we can stop it ourselves oh I can't get no help in here we can stop some of this stuff ourselves how dare you gonna go with me and her at the same time uh uh no we can stop some of this stuff ourselves we can put our foot down and we can tell him if you ain't gonna treat her right then you ain't gonna treat me right if you ain't gonna take care of her then you ain't gonna take care of my kids. We can stop it. We need to stop competing with each other and learn what the Proverbs writer tells us. That beauty and favor are fleeting. They will not last. But a woman who fears the Lord, she's to be praised. And understand that it ain't all in the looks. Because no matter how good you look right now, you ain't going to look like that always. 